What's up everybody and welcome to a brand new Angular tip. Angular just released version 13.2.0 and with it a brand new feature called Diagnostic that was released inside the Angular compiler. Let's take a look. To better explain what diagnostics are and how we can benefit from them during our daily development, imagine an application that displays a simple counter. Now, a counter like we have it here is not really useful. Usually we also want to increment the counter. So let's add a component that displays a button to increment the counter. We call this component increment counter. The component is pretty straightforward. It accepts a counter as an input. It displays some headline text and the button. On the button click, we call the increment function and the increment function then increments the counter and outputs a counter change event. So let's hop over to our counter component and take advantage of the increment counter component. Now we can use the increment counter component and pass our counter as an input. So this now displays our counter and an additional increment counter button. But note that nothing happens if we click on the increment counter button. And well, that makes sense because we only used a normal input binding. Because the increment counter component accepts a counter input and emits a counter change event, we have the possibility to take advantage of two-way binding. Since in Angular we use square brackets to bind properties as inputs and regular brackets for event binding, we can combine them together to achieve two-way data binding. Since we use square brackets and the normal brackets inside, the two-way binding is often also referred to as banana in the box syntax. So let's go ahead and take advantage of the banana in the box syntax. So let's check out our application. If we click on the increment button, we expect the counter to go up. But somehow it's still broken. Hmm, so how do we proceed? So maybe the log provides additional information? Let's check it out. And yeah, there is something. So when running ng-serve, we actually received a warning. And this warning tells us that inside our counter component, in the two-way binding syntax, the parentheses should be inside the brackets, like this, for example. Furthermore, it also provides us a nice link that explains two-way binding in detail. So what have we done wrong? As the message already states, the parentheses should be used inside the brackets. In our case, we actually use them outside the brackets. So let's go ahead and fix that. Diagnostics are right. We actually use them the wrong way around. So without diagnostics, there is no way for the Angular compiler to detect this error because this is actually valid for the compiler. We are currently binding to an event that is called square bracket counter square bracket. Of course, it's not what we intended here. And also it doesn't look like a banana in the box. It's more like a box in the banana. So let's fix that and actually move the parentheses inside the square brackets. So if we now click the increment button, our counter gets incremented. Very nice. But detecting this bug still took some time Thanks to the diagnostic, it didn't take much time, but it still took some. So wouldn't it be cooler if our compilation would instantly fail if such an error occurs? Well, no problem, because we have full control over configuring diagnostics. Diagnostics can be configured in the Angular compiler options inside the tsconfig.json. So in this latest Angular version, we now have a extended diagnostics flag that allows us to configure diagnostics according to our need. At this point, the Angular compiler knows two diagnostic checks. One is the invalid banana in the box syntax, the one we just saw, and the other one is the nullish coalescing not nullable check, which we will see in a minute. By default, both of those checks are enabled. Diagnostics knows three levels of severities. There's the warning level, which is the one we just saw, where a warning message will be printed to the compilation log, but the compilation will still pass. Then there's the error level, which means 
that there's an error printed to the compilation log and the compilation will fail. And there's the third one, which is suppress, which allows us to suppress whole diagnostics or sim single checks. There are two different levels to configure diagnostics. We can either configure a check or we can configure the default category. So let's first start by configuring the default category. To configure the default category, we simply use the key default category and we can then set the default level. As just mentioned, the default for the default category is warning. So let's change that to error. Let's now quickly switch back to our counter component and again use the invalid banana in the box syntax. If we now restart our application, we see that it fails and we don't get a warning anymore, but we get an error with the exact same message as before. Of course, we could now also use suppress as a default category. So if we now rerun our application, everything starts perfectly fine. But of course, our application doesn't work. So let's take a look at the second level of configuration that allows us to configure each check individually. So let's use the checks property. And then inside the checks property, we can use the checks name. In our case, it's invalid banana in box and then change the level according to our need. So even though the default category is now set to suppress, we can set the, le we can set the severity level of the invalid banana in the box to error. And if we now rerun our application, we get an error. As I mentioned, there are currently two checks available. But before we take a look at the second check, we quickly fix our invalid banana in the box syntax so that it doesn't bother us anymore. Our increment counter is reusable, but we can still improve it so that it can be used in even more use cases. Currently, the displayed headline is hard-coded. Wouldn't it be cool if this headline is dynamic so that the developer that uses this component can pass his own headline down to the increment counter component. And if he doesn't pass any component, no worries. We just display the hard-coded text that we currently have. To achieve that feature, we add another input called headline, which is of type string. Inside our template, we then use the headline in combination with our hard-coded text and the nullish coalescing operator. In case you've never heard of the nullish coalescing operator, it's an operator that evaluates the expression on the left-hand side and checks if it's null or undefined. If not, it will display the value of the left-hand side. And if it's null or undefined, it will simply take the value from the right-hand side. Our counter component can now use this headline property and pass my headline as a new headline to the increment counter. And as expected, our custom headline gets displayed above the button. So this looks pretty great, but let's also inspect our compilation log, just to be sure that we don't have any warnings or any errors. So we actually get a warning. And the warning says that the left side of this nullish coalescing operator doesn't include null or undefined in its type, which is true because we just typed it with string. And therefore, the operator can be safely removed, which is actually correct. Inside our increment counter component, we type the headline with string. So therefore we expect that always a string is passed. If we would have typed it with undefined or null, we would also allow null values or undefined values. So either we can add this, in case we leave the types as they are right now, our nullish coalescing operator doesn't make sense anymore. So those of you that paid close attention may ask the question, why did we even get this warning at all? Because previously in the extended diagnostics configuration, we set the default category to suppress. And you are absolutely right. We only got this error because in the meantime, I already updated our configuration. So we still have the default category set to suppress. But I added another check called nullish coalescing not nullable and set its level to warning. And that's exactly why we got a warning. Now, before wrapping up, I have two further important remarks regarding the extended diagnostics configuration. I would actually never use suppress for a default category. This was just for demonstration purpose. 
I would personally recommend to not use this default category property and just leave the default category as it is, which means level warning. So I would remove that and then I would only configure individual checks. So for my taste now, the nullish call as not nullable is enough as a warning, but I would really want to invalidate banana in the box to report an error and let the compilation fails if we use the wrong syntax. Another important thing to be aware of is that if you want to use extended diagnostics, you need to enable strict templates by using strict templates through in the Angular compiler options. So that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also feel free to share this video with your colleagues and see you next time.